Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this video we're looking at inky reveals using some real footage elements. We see this kind of method a lot in show intros or atmospheric title treatments. The basic effect doesn't take much, but we can build on that with some depth, combining or blending multiple clips into a more nuanced look. So let's dip in and make a splash with these compositing techniques. Let's start with selecting some footage to make use of. I'm looking for ink drops, ink splats, something that will have a nice varied and organic edge, good speed. And honestly, searching for footage can be hard. However, it's a great time to talk about this video sponsor, Storyblocks. So in case you didn't know, Storyblocks is a massive stock asset service. They're here to help you create more video and bring your stories to life without sacrificing your vision due to budget, time, or resources. Their all access plan offers unlimited downloads of everything in their library so you can create more and spend less. With over 1 million stock assets and growing, you're sure to find what you're looking for. 4K and HD video, images, music, After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, all royalty free for commercial and personal use. You'll stay on budget while telling the best version of your story with their affordable subscriptions that scale to meet your needs. So please check out Storyblocks using the link in the description. And give them a try today. The first core concept I want to get into is mats. Mats are used to define the visual area of one layer with the visual information of another. We'll be using luma mats, which take how bright pixels are and use that to either hide or reveal parts of another layer. So the basic technique is to take one layer we want to reveal, maybe this footage of a snake, footage also from Storyblocks. Then we put another layer over it that will do the revealing. So here's our ink. You can see this is just black and white pixels. Your ideal ink may have color. Don't worry about that since the luma mat will only care about how bright or dark pixels are. If you want to simplify things visually, you might drop a tint on there to remove the color information. You may also need to invert the footage so the white areas and dark areas flip. I do need to do that so that the ink here is white or it has much luminance while the background becomes dark or has no luminance. Then we set this layer on top to be the luma mat of the layer below here in the switches and modes zone and the result is the areas that are black on the matte layer have been remapped to be see-through. The areas that are white on the matte layer are the visible ones. Now we can define the look by modifying how bright or dark or contrasty or not the matte layer is. We can do this by dropping on a curves or levels effect that will modify the layer. I prefer to use curves myself for a smoother roll off and control the values, but if you prefer levels, uh, I guess let me know in the comments with hashtag team levels or team curves, I guess. Notice how affecting the values changes the matte though. In this case, brighter means bigger, more opaque, darker means smaller, more transparent. When we have the visuals figured out, then we want to do something about the time or the speed of the clip. If we can modify using time remapping. Turn on the time remapping by going layer, time, enable time remapping. This is going to reveal the secret hidden property on footage and it comes with a couple of keyframes. And we can extend the layer out infinitely. Squishing the keyframes closer will make the footage faster. Pulling them apart will make the footage slower. If I can take a really quick tangent here, think of time remapping like you're grabbing a rubber band. These lines on the rubber band are the frames of the footage. These keyframes are where we grab the band and move the specific points around. So when I move the keyframes away, it stretches out the band. When I move them together, it compresses them. I could set another keyframe in here and move it around, and you can visualize the change this has on the frames and speed, making them closer together, showing more frames per second, therefore faster footage. Pulling them apart will show fewer frames per second, making the footage slower. So now we can make periods of faster and slower footage. It's lovely to have this kind of thing blast on, so I'm going to set a keyframe here after the bulk of the ink has already and kind of formed. I'm going to drag that moment to happen a little bit earlier. So we're compressing here, we're stretching here, meaning this is going to be faster than it was before. This is going to be slower than it was before. And we'll likely want to ease into this frame a little. Hard changes in the speed here rarely feel right in these kinds of things. So we want to ease into this keyframe then head into the graph editor to adjust the handle here so that it kind of matches the outgoing linear slope. You may need to change to look at the value graph rather than the speed graph so that yours looks exactly like mine. But now we can reveal layers with other layers, refine the look, refine the speed. I think we're ready to add more layers to this and really get into some looks. So here we have some paper, also from Storyblocks. I'll do a few adjustments here with hue, saturation, and a curves to make this a little bit more moody maybe. And then we're going to drop some ink on it. Drop, drop. And maybe that ink is going to be kind of green. So, so I'm going to tint the ink here, maybe set it to multiply so it's like it's staining the paper. Now I want there to be a snake in the ink. So here comes the snake. I'll position it here. Maybe we set the mode of the snake to screen or something. So the highlights of the snake are what we have popping through. And to make this only be seen in that inky pool, 
cool. I'm going to duplicate the ink layer. I'm going to invert it so that the white is on the inside. Use it as a luma mat. Use a curves to modify the luma a little bit here. So it's a little bit more constrained. But now you can see snake in the ink. Yikes. Someone must be about to scribe a suspenseful story. We may want to do more to the luma ink splotch, like blur it so that it's less distinct around the edges. When you're overlapping two pieces of the same footage, you can sometimes end up with this kind of water ring look. So trying to mitigate that by adjusting your levels and blurring one out a little bit can really help out. And we may want to blur the snake footage a little bit around the outside as well. We can do that using a mask to simply limit where the snake footage can be seen at all. And then we can feather that out. Or we might drop a blur onto this layer and then use the compositing options of the blur effect to limit where the blur is happening to be only on the outside here. So I'm setting the mask to subtract. Then we're using the compositing options so that the effect looks at the mask. So now we have texture, we have blending modes, we're comping some layers in here, and maybe that's as much as you need. But let's go one more level deeper, shall we? Let's add some depth in here. I'm going to set up a camera and we're going to make these layers 3D. Then I'll push the camera in, just a couple of keyframes on the camera's position. So now I would like the snake to appear like it's deeper, like it's behind the paper. But as you can see, if you push that layer of the snake back, it's now just behind the paper. And that's not really good. There is an interesting solution, a little life hack for you here. We can hijack the layer order and have it take precedence over the actual 3D order of things by using an adjustment layer in between. So once I drop this adjusting buddy in here, you can see that even though the snake layer is behind the paper, it appears like we can see it through the paper. It's a pretty cool little trick that lets us have depth and blending mode interaction between things that really should not be on top of each other. It's kind of an interesting unreal thing you can do. However, this trick can get a little confusing. So while life hacks are nice, here is another more literal method you might do. I'm going to just use the ink to make a hole in the paper. So we have the paper. It's 3D. We bring on the ink. That's 3D now, too. They live right on top of each other. We might want to parent one to the other so they don't get separated. Now I'm going to set the paper to look at the ink as a luma mat. Since the ink is black, it makes a hole. However, we only see the paper where the white of the ink layer is. And that's not so good. We don't want a weird random rectangle. So we're going to use an inverse luma mat, and then we're going to invert the layer itself. Suddenly we're all good. Maybe that's a little bit confusing, but here's what's happening. Any area where there are no pixels at all certainly has no luminance either. That's why the area outside the bounds of the layer are treated the same as black pixels. So if we invert the layer using the invert effect, now the pixels on the outside have no luma and the pixels beyond the layer have no luma too. So if we then use the inverse luma mat, which means we're using zero luma as full alpha and full luma as no alpha, then we should be all good. Although I feel the more I explain this, the less sense it seems to make. But now we have the hole in the paper and we can put things in front of or behind it and fly a camera through the hole. Whee! I'm going to drop this dust footage behind and maybe some different dust footage in front, also from Storyblocks. Now you may want to actually pre-compose some of this stuff if you're going to be making more complex scenes with lots of holes in things. So I'm going to pre-comp the paper so that they can't be interfered with by other layers at all. And maybe you want more holes in here so I can start kind of adding more of those in. But because one layer can only have one mat, we need to use kind of a different method. I'm going to use uh, blending modes like stencils in silhouettes, also based on Luma, to create many, many holes in this same paper. This does a similar thing as you can see, but I can stack a few of these on top of each other to make more holes in the layer below. And because it's all pre-comped, we're only punching holes in the paper, not all the other layers out here. So with all of these tools, I hope now you can make some cool shots like this one. We're using a pre-comp to get that paper and ink together here. Then I'm also putting holes in that paper inside the pre-comp using blending modes like we just talked about. So then we can push the camera through there. We're just using position keyframes like we already did. And we have layers of dust in front of and behind. So we're making this kind of world of depth. I have a few gradient layers floating around that gives us this kind of volumetric color in the space. Oh, here comes a snake. When we're coming through, we're using a luma mat with the ink again to reveal the snake when we come through the hole. And you can really appreciate all the layers when we look at this from a custom view here to see them all lined up as the camera goes through. All this is very doable with the techniques that we just talked about. Lots of curves and hue saturation changes to get everything moody and atmospheric. We got an adjustment layer on top, kind of tamping everything down. We have another layer on top, adding vignetting to kind of pull your attention to the Middle, which is just a solid with a mask, not much to it. And it all comes together to kind of make a nice cohesive shot because we're adding more and more layers of nuance. We're not just 
leaving it at one thing. We're kind of building it, which is why I suppose having access to a lot of stock assets can be very useful when creating these kinds of things. Well, I hope this video gave you enough information to make use of stock assets as transitions and to make cool inky reveals like these. If you have any questions about this stuff, do let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out. I'm putting up new tutorials here all the time, so consider subscribing if you want to learn about After Effects, title treatments, motion graphics, all that good stuff. And if you want to get at me, I'm at EC Abrams everywhere on the internet, Twitter, Instagram, all the places. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and I'll see you all around the internet.